All right, guys, well, we're back on the 37. Yay! And what we figured out we work on today is we're gonna actually build the controls for the air ride. Now, the reason I'm doing this now is I've got to get sheet metal this week to start sheeting the car, and I'd like to get a lot of this figured out before I start putting panels in. So, the idea that I've got and we worked on so far is that we've got a lot of sharp lines in the car and we kind of want to stay with the rivets and everything towards aircraft. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a bunch of three quarter inch wrenches and we're going to build our own like throttle box like you see on planes so that you can push all three forward and drop the car. You can pull all three back and lift the car or you can do them individually to balance out the car. Now the reason there's only three instead of four is front two bags are only two feet apart. So there's absolutely no reason to put them on individually. It's not gonna counter anything. So that's why we're doing three. It'll be front, left, and right rear. So, all right, so we're gonna start laying out the sheet metal and making a box. Cool. Let's do it. All right, so look, we've got the box completed. Everything's ready to go there. I've chosen my three wrenches and I've gone ahead and cut off the box in, okay? Now, stopped by Depot today, picked up some half inch nuts, which equate to a three quarter inch wrench. And I sat down and cut some inch and a half why 120 wall rings okay i just took some 120 wall tubing cut equal rings three quarter inch wide and i've round them out so they fit with the dial pin in it so what i'm going to do now is square up the wrenches with the nuts weld them on and then square it all up with the rings and weld it on the reason i have it on this rod right now is so that it's easier for me to square up and actually weld them on so they stay straight so after I do that, then we can work on the whole assembly, but I've got to get these welded out first. All right, so I took this bolt, threaded all three nuts on it, spaced out exactly two inches apart. So by doing this, I can keep them exactly two inches apart up here and two inches here, so they should be straight. I've already measured them and laid them out, so I'll tack one at a time in case I bump them and move along and keep measuring to make sure they're even. That way they're gonna be real nice and smooth together. So I'm gonna just put a tack on each one until I have it there, then I'll put a quick weld on each side to hold it in place. All right, while that's cooling, I'm gonna take the box that I made already and I've marked center on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole large enough to fit the bolt through. All right, so the only reason that I'm not going in and welding the nut on this side, you know, putting the wrenches on, is so if I need to adjust this or I got issues or whatever, I can really back off this bolt and simply remove everything. That's why I'm doing it this way. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Forward, back, you can do them individual, whatever you want. So that's controls. Now, we need to put in 
the actual switches in here and then put pieces so that when you shift the lever forward or you shift the lever back, it hits a switch. All right, guys, as sometimes things happen, most of the time, I start building something. I've got something sitting in my head and I'm going for it. And then it just hits me. This isn't right. This is not going to work long term. This is something that's going to always give me problems and irritate me. So this metal box you've seen me building so far with the switches inside, it, it's not going to work. I, I just really feel like this could work maybe now, but after I lift the car up and down a hundred times, this is going to start to act up. So I've stopped today. I've gone and picked up a few different things. Well, I picked up switches. I scrounged up metal and a few other things from scrap bins and whatnot. So I've got some a different way to go with this. So that's what I'm going to do now. We're going to stop. We're going to regroup. Instead of using sheet metal, we're using plates. This is going to handle it for sure. So this is the way we're going to go. All right, so with the new pieces we're making for the sides, these guys here, they're actually already drilled. So I scavenged good pieces. These are actually for making training mounts, but whatever. Um, this is a, this part's ready to go. So now we're going to take a piece of eighth inch flat strap, and Liv here is going to drill holes in it so we can actually put the switches in it. Now it'll make sense once you see me start putting it together, but I need her to drill the holes so I can work on fapping the next piece. So she's going to take care of that for me, and we'll get on the rest. All right, so I've got the main sides done and the plate drilled for the toggle in here. So as you can see, I'll be able to control them all together or I'll cut this dowel and I'll have them all individual. So what I need to do now is put a piece in here to actually catch the toggles when it goes back and forth. Now guys, just to let you know, I started a Patreon site and if you don't know what Patreon is, it's where you can go in and for a membership or whatever, you get all the extras, the bloopers, the raffles, uh, all types of stuff. So what I did is I started one of those. So for you guys that want to get all the extra stuff, midweek updates, things like that, behind the scenes, you can go on and you pledge so much a month or whatever, which believe me, we're all broke here. So I'm talking like five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever you can afford. Um, that money is going to help fund these builds because I can tell you right now, I'm cutting it tight and there's a reason why I scrounge everything is because I don't have the cash to keep doing it. So just to let you guys know, it's out there. There's no pressure. It's not going to affect the weekly videos, okay? If you can't do it, no big deal. But if you could, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, but yeah, check it out. I'll try to put a link here. If not, I'll put a link in the description. So. For those of you who can, we appreciate it. For those of you who can't, not a big deal. Okay, we're going to keep the videos coming. We're going to do everything we can to keep them coming. So, anyway, enough about that. Let's get back on this. Okay, so what I've done is taken half inch tubing, square tubing, drilled the three holes. Now these holes are for the actual ends of the toggle to go into so that, and now I'll weld this to the bottom of the wrenches. I'm going to weld them together like this until it's on good and then I'll take and cut out in between. That way they move individually. I just want them all lined up so they strike at the same time. So I'm going to weld them together then cut them out. Okay, so after I weld it, the square piece on with the holes, now you might be able to see it, when I move a lever, it will actually activate the toggle either way. All three work good. Now I drill the hole in the square, put it up inside there so there's no way you can lose these, they're not gonna come out, okay? So, the next thing I wanna do is actually add a spring to each lever on either side so it'll center back up. That way, if I hit a bump or something, it's not gonna be 
adjusting my air ride. So for that, I went to Depot and bought springs. Now they sell them individually and they're like three bucks each. Well, then I was looking over in the other section with the hinges and stuff and they sell a box of 84 springs for $4. Sounds like simple math to me, so went ahead and bought these. Now, don't know they're gonna be strong enough. Uh, it's gonna have to be a trial and error here, but I'm gonna put a rod in on either side and put hooks or something on the wrenches so I can adjust springs later. All right, guys, I went ahead and got the springs on. Now, I'm probably gonna go heavier springs in the future, but this is what I have. So the way it's set up right now, they won't trigger, but if I push, it'll return back. So, as you can see, now I'll probably go with stronger springs so you really have to push it, but for right now, that's totally fine. The rods are in, they'll put the different springs in. So, the main mechanism is pretty much done, except for the handle. So we're going to cut some dial pin right now and make this handle real quick. All right, guys. Well, from what you can see here is where I've got it mocked up. This is where I was planning on putting it. I'm going to do a sheet metal cover that goes over up the slits for it. Maybe a few gauges here to show the actual pressure in the tanks. So it'd be like an aircraft throttle where I can push up to lift up, pull back to lower down. Should turn out pretty good. I mean, this whole car is covered in sheet metal on rivets. So, I mean, aircraft is the way I'm I'm thinking here. A lot of the theme is going to, I don't like the word theme, but that's kind of the way my mindset's going on this car. Um, I've got plans for plenty of gauges and all my switch panels and everything else. So, should turn out pretty cool. Now, next week, what I'm going to be doing is taking and running all the air lines, the wiring for the air ride, getting this sucker mounted up here, ready to go. So that's my plan for next week. So we can get one more thing checked off the list here. So anyway, guys, well, I appreciate you watching. If you like this video, do me a favor, like and subscribe. And if you want to see something else we've done, there's a link over here. Those of you that have already gone out to Patreon and checked it out and everything, I really appreciate it. We appreciate all the support. Now, any money put in goes into these builds. So. All right, guys. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll see you next week.